Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Craig and I'm a software developer in the UK and in this video we're going to look at lists in HTML. There are two kinds of lists that we're going to focus on, unordered lists and ordered lists. And in HTML the UL element gives us an unordered list in which our list items are bulleted. These bullets can be removed in CSS using the list style property and these lists would be commonly used to create the navigation menus in nav bars on many websites. The the OL element gives us a list that is ranked, either numerically, alphabetically or even with Roman numerals. Ordered lists can be reversed and we can also set an initial start value. Inside both kinds of lists we would add list items using an LI element. Inside these list items we can add text, images and other HTML elements like links or images for example. We can even add lists inside of lists which we would call nested lists. So let's go ahead and find out how we do all of this but before we start if you do like the content on the channel please remember to smash the the like button, subscribe, comment and all of that stuff as it really helps with YouTube's algorithm. Okay so that being said let's get started. So we'll start with a blank HTML file to work with. As always if you've seen my previous videos I'm using the live server extension here in VS Code. So this means I don't have to keep refreshing the browser when I make some kind of change. So this streamlines our workflow a fair amount. Okay so lists in HTML can be either ordered or unordered. An example of a typical use case of a list might be for the links in a navigation bar at the top of your page for example. So in these circumstances these would be list items which contain anchor or a tags and we would then use these links to navigate to different pages within our site or perhaps to even different sections on the same page. An unordered list is a bullet pointed list and is defined by a set of UL tags, an opening and closing UL tag. This is the kind of list that we would use most commonly. We can of course remove these bullet points using CSS, using the list style property, but we will look at that once we arrive at the upcoming series of videos on CSS. Adding a set of opening and closing UL tags by themselves does absolutely nothing. It just defines to the browser that we're going to be including a list structure that is unordered. The UL tags actually act as a container of sorts for the items that will comprise the list. The browser knows that when it sees a UL element that everything inside of those tags is going to be part of an unordered list. So when we add UL tags we also need to add list item elements inside them and we do this using LI tags an opening and closing li tag and li stands for list item. So heading back to our text editor I'll show you another cool emit trick that we can use. If I type ul angled bracket li times 3 and then add a set of curly braces and inside those curly braces I'll write this is a list item and this will give us an unordered list with three list items. The angled bracket is used within Emmet when we want something nested inside of a parent element. So what we're saying here is we're having an unordered list with three child list item elements. The curly braces that are put on the end of our declaration will be the text content of those list items. So if we hit save we see that Emmet builds out for us an unordered list with three list items and each list item has the text content of this is a list item. Only the content of the LI elements appear on the page and you'll see that if I just highlight them now and hit delete and save that even with the UL tag still there we have a completely blank page. So the UL element defines that there's going to be an unordered list structure and the LI elements inside are the items that make the list. The contents of these LI items will be what is rendered to the page. Similarly, we can have an ordered list. So we've just seen an unordered list, we can have a list that is ordered. So instead of the bullet points, our ordered list will have a defined order or rank. So this defined order or rank could be a numerical order, it could be denoted by Roman numerals, or it could be alphabetical. The default option when we make an ordered list is numerical. 
So if we do not define what type of order we want, then we will always have numerical to start with. We see the ordered list here is defined by the OL tag. So UL is for unordered list and OL is for ordered list. Let's pop back over to VS Code and change the UL tag to an OL tag. So if I highlight the letters UL, which I can do by double clicking them, and then I'll hit Command or Control D, and this will find the next instance of that particular selection. So here I've selected UL, hitting Command or Control D will find the next UL. Once we have that, we can change both selections at the same time. And you will see that once we save, our bullet points are replaced by a numerical list. If we need to, we can define a type of ordered list and we can also alter the number the list starts at by adding an HTML attribute to set the start value. Attributes tell us more about elements and we have seen these in previous videos. In the last video, we looked at images and links and we were using an href attribute, which is the hyperlink reference or the URL to the link. In images, we're using an SRC attribute, which is the source of the image or where the browser will source the image from. Attributes will tell us more about elements. They provide additional information and are always specified in the start or opening tag. And we'll cover these in greater detail in the next video. But for now, inside the OL, angled brackets, I will type start equals 100 and then 100 goes inside of quotations. This means that we'll now have a ordered list in which the numbers will start counting from 100. So when we write this attribute of start, we will need a space between the element name and the attribute name, then an equal sign, and then the value inside the attribute and this goes inside quotation marks. If we want to, we can also reverse our ordered list. So we can make the list run the other way, starting from large to small. Again, we could add the start attribute to make the number start at a given number and run down from there. So say for example, we were doing a top 10 countdown list, then we would have a start value of 10, and then in front of where we have the start attribute, we would write reversed and then a space between this attribute and the next. And we see that our list now begins counting backwards from 10. Another thing we can do with lists is to define the type, as I mentioned. By default, our ordered list is numbered or numerical, and we can actually put this in and define it as type equals one. So if we delete our reversed and start attributes and add a type attribute of one, you see that our list is numbered as we would expect counting from number one. This is the default value as I said, so if we do not define the type, we will always get this which is actually type equals one. If we were to change type to type equals capital A, the list is now ordered with uppercase letters. If we wanted lowercase letters rather than uppercase, we would use type equals lowercase a we could have them listed with Roman numerals by using type equals capital I. The capital I gives us uppercase Roman numerals and of course we can have lowercase Roman numerals and we would put a lowercase I if we wanted to do that. So whether it is by numbers, letters or numerals, what is important to note is that it has a definite order or rank. HTML also supports lists within lists or we would call them nested lists. I'll delete our type attribute and I'll add another list item. Inside the new list item, I'll simply add another list. So this time I'm going to put in an unordered list and again, I'll use an Emmet shortcut of UL, the angled bracket and LI times three. I'll add our curly braces on the end and inside those curly braces, I'll add the text content of this is a nested item. And when we hit tab, we now see that inside the fourth list item that we added, we have a whole new list inside a list item. It's an unordered list, which has three of its own list items. If we really wanted to, we can even nest a list inside of our nested list by following the same pattern. And we could keep this going until infinity. We could keep adding lists nested inside of lists and then lists nested inside of those nested lists if our heart so desired. 
I do encourage you to have a little play around with this after the video is finished, maybe changing the types around for each one and using both ordered and unordered lists and see what kind of stuff you can do, see how deep you can get your lists nested. So with all of that, all of that basic information fed into our brains, hopefully, let's put it to use and make a list. One of the most prominent examples of a list that I think most people would be familiar with is a recipe. So I have a link here to Perfect Pancakes on the BBC Good Food website. We're going to use the information contained herein to make a list of ingredients and a list of steps for the method. So please feel free to use another recipe or if you like another list based on another topic altogether. We'll start by copying the relevant text here if you are following along with me and then we'll head over to VS Code again and paste what we've copied into the body section of our HTML document. We'll give a h1 element using an Emmet shortcut of we'll type h1 and hit tab and inside that we'll add the text of perfect pancakes. Next we'll cut out where it says ingredients and also method at the same time using multiple selection. I can do this by double clicking one and then going to the next one holding command or control and double clicking that one. Then I cut them out and I will type h2 and hit tab to create two h2 elements and then paste what I just cut out back inside the h2 elements. We'll create a ul to put the ingredients in I think and we will need five li items inside our unordered list. So we'll cut these five ingredients out as we will be able to paste simultaneously into each li if the selection count and the list item count are the same. Once we've done that, we will save and we have our ingredients section laid out quite nicely here. Next, we'll go down the steps of the method, of which there are nine. So we'll just take a second to highlight all nine of these individually so we can cut them out as nine selections. That way we can paste them straight into the list items once we have added the markup. So now we use the Emmet shortcut to make an ordered list with nine list items. So that is OL, the angled bracket, and LI multiplied by nine. I'll hit tab, and now I'll select inside each of these list items using command and option and just using the downward arrow key to go down. Once I have cursors inside all of the list items, I'll hit command or control V to paste the nine selections that I cut out previously. As there are nine list items and nine cutout selections, they will just each go in a list item. Okay, so once we have that, we'll save and we see that live server updates the page for us. We have a pretty cool looking list replicating what was on the BBC webpage. Once we have some understanding of CSS, we'll be able to make this page look as good, if not better, than it currently does on the BBC Good Food page. But for now, we'll just stick to the HTML and we'll stick to using what we'll know. So I think this is a good place to stop the video as this is lists pretty much covered. There's something that we'll use quite commonly when writing HTML. We'll find that we use them all the time, as I say, for things like navigation. Okay, so we'll stop there, guys. That's lists pretty much covered. We've looked at ordered and unordered lists. The UL element gives us an unordered list in which our list items are bulleted, and these bullets can be removed in CSS using the list style property, which we'll look at in detail during the CSS series of videos. The OL element gives us a list that is ranked numerically, alphabetically, or with Roman numerals. Our ordered list can be reversed and we can also set an initial start value. Inside both kinds of lists, we would need to add list items and inside of these list items, we can add any HTML that we like, including more lists, which we would call nested lists and links and images and things like that. In the next video, we'll look at attributes in links and images. And I hope you enjoyed the content on the channel. If so, please remember to smash the like button, subscribe, comment, and all of that stuff as it really helps the channel. YouTube loves all that as it counts as engagement. But anyway, I appreciate you stopping by and giving this content a chance. Hopefully it's helping you out and I'll see you in the next video. So take care and I'll see you soon.